everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these really fun cards which are filled with gel. So you can use all different kinds of gels and I'll talk about those in more detail. But look how fun they are. They've got bubbles in them which look like the real bubbles in the pond or the sea. I have done a water filled card before and I'll link that one up here because that was really fun. But this one with the gel, the I lo love the gel I think more because when the card is, you know, upright it doesn't, you know, sink the water in the other one which actually did work really well with that style card that I done so it had the otters on it so it did look good but this one here it just stays there and I just love it I've been playing with it and I've tested this I've had the gel in here for a good week and it doesn't leak just like I did with the water ones as well but I'm going to show you how to make them also this one here you can see I've done this is all using the new paper discovery underwater world collection Again, I'll show you all of that as well, but look how cool they are. And these are underneath this. Again, I'll show you all of that in a moment. So this is birthday fishes, and then inside I've just kept, you know, the theme there and stamped one of the little lilies with the pads. And this one here, I don't know how well the glitter's picking up, but I've covered, I've die cut it in vellum and then in black, just paper pieced it a little bit and covered it with uh, my sparkle pen. But there's loads of dimension. This is all embossed. It's just a really lovely card to make, so let me show you how. Okay, so this is what I'm using. So I've got here these Tidy Z. These are just um, food and freezer bags. So I've got the ones with the double um, zip, the, or the double closure there, which, yeah, double seal, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, but again, I will talk through the measurements and everything of that in a moment. But this is some of the new collection. It's lovely, Underwater World. And um, there we've got Into the Pond die set, and this is the Elements die set. So I've mixed those two, because I've used these fish on one of them and then I've used pretty much everything apart from the kingfisher and the frogs and the bird on the other cards, so that's those. And then the stamp set, I love the stamp set because it's got some really nice sentiments and this is the sentiment stamp set. And then I've also used this stamp set here on both the cards, which is around the pond. And then this is my favorite, probably, possibly my favorite ever embossing folder. I just love it and you'll, well, you'll see anyway. And then also the vellum, the vellum packs are beautiful and I've already cut, because there is actually, it's probably that doesn't show too well, but the vellum under here, you, there's more bubbles. Can you kind of see the pictures of the bubbles there? So that's from this one, you can just see there. And then on this one here, there's actual lines. So it's like the, you know, when you see all the kind of the green plants kind of on a real like um, clear flowing stream and they all kind of drift down in the same direction. It's that effect, which I think you can just see it kind of through there as well. But that is the around the pond vellum papers. Again, as always, everything will be linked below, but this here is brilliant because it embosses and cuts. So I'm gonna take that off because we're gonna need that in a moment. So this is a six by six card. So I've gone and just cut a piece of 12 by six and then scored at six inches and folded it in half. So that's that piece. Then to cut this here, so this is a six by six embossing folder, but I've cut my paper down to five and three quarters squared because I want a border. Okay, so you'll see there. And again, you might not have noticed, but you can see the border there. Just, you know, I like borders. <laughs> and then I've got this piece here, which is five and a half squared. So it's decorative vellum. If you haven't got vellum, even just a blue plain paper would look you know, good. It's just if you put, well, I'll talk about that now actually. So I'll get rid of the scoreboard. So the gel that I've got here, I picked this up for 79p. I got it from the, it was like a, a bargain shop, but um, I mean, you can go to the pound shop, but they're a pound, but you can get them even cheaper. And um, this one's already blue. There is clear as well, but like I done with the water, if you get, when you get your sandwich bag, okay, so we're going to be, I'm going to be cutting mine down, but you could probably just fold this one in if you use some foam again we'll go into more detail in a moment but one when, when you've got your sandwich bag open it up and grab an ink cube or some you know you might have your ink refill inks and just drip a few drops in there or just smear the pad of your um ink cube inside here and then add the water or the clear gel okay so but you can use hand gels you know your um you might have your anti-back kind of things those gels there's all kinds but this is really thick so again i'm not going to link this because well i just can't but just look for a cheap one and then you just want to squeeze it down into one corner like so 
It's up to you how much, I mean, you don't want loads, but I mean, you can see how much I'm filling there because it will all spread out. And we're going to be kind of pushing it all in a little bit. So I'm going to just leave that there. We'll go back to that in a minute. I just want to do the embossing on this piece here. So like I said, this is slightly smaller than the six by six folder. So I'm just going to bring that in so it's got equal, um, you know, overhang of the embossing folder there and just get that one run through. Okay, so now this bit will come out and then look at this gorgeous pattern. It's so good. Oh, this would be great for tunnel cards as well. So the one that I used, the paper discovery, the kit that I had, and it was like the whimsical kind of forest. This would be brilliant. And again, oh, I just love it when there's just so many ideas and ways to use things. So. That's how it looks, but I did like, I've used a silver, I think it's a Centura Pearl. I brought it from an independent store and she'd obviously split up lots of cardstock, but you kind of get, you know, familiar with cardstocks and I've got other Centura Pearl and this feels like it is. So it's almost like an oyster gray kind of color, if that is such a thing. Anyway, I've just got an ink pad here and I'm just going to just kind of lightly kiss all the sides and it just creates a shadow and more depth. If anything, it actually shows up all that detail even more. So I'm just gonna go all around the edges here. And I'm just going around the middle as well. So whatever it is that you're using for your window, if you've embossed it, or even if you haven't, just lightly, you know, if you've got white, just putting a very light grey against it will just really transform it. And then just kind of, I'm not going to add any more ink, but just brush over the rest. Now, you just really notice all of that detail. So that's that bit done. Okay, so back to this again. Now, I want to make sure that this is five by five. I just found that that was a nice size for this six by six. So if you haven't got one of these, mine's just, well, it's boiling hot now, but this is the We Are Memory Keepers Fuse Tool. And I use this when I made the water card and it will basically seal your edges. Now this is just a sandwich bag. They do have actual, you know, plastic pockets and stuff that they sell with it as well. And I did do the December daily and I made my own pockets using it. So. That's what I'm going to be using, but if you don't have that, what you want to do is line it up with your grid or whatever it is you've got, one, two, three, four, five, and then kind of fold this down. Okay, obviously seal it, make sure there's no air in it because you, you know it's just going to be too bulky otherwise, so just get it to that five by five size. So just fold that one down and that one. You don't want to cut any bulk off of here because it would just all ooze out. So that's one way to do it, okay? but it will be a little bit bulky, but if you add your foam, which I've done, all under here, this is this is a sheet of foam. If you double up your foam, then that should level everything off. But I'm not doing that, so what I wanna do is, I'm just gonna grab a ruler, and one, two, three, four, five, I'm just gonna draw a line, just with a marker, just roughly on the plastic. You don't have to be exact with this. And then across one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's right. Just go across there. And I'm actually going to fuse these two points or sides together. Don't need to worry about all of that because that's obviously already done. And yeah, we can let all the air out in a moment. So my fuse tool is nice and hot. I'm going to just use my normal metal ruler. It does come with one. I'm just going to lay that down. Actually, I'm going to bring in my board because I forgot to do that last time. You want to make sure you've got something that can hold the heat. And then you want to go slow and it needs to be boiling hot. Okay, so this is very, very hot. And you can smell it as well. Not like terrible, but you know when it's warm. So I'm just going to very slowly run this down here. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same. You can see that it's just come away, but that will be fused together. You might get the odd little gap, but I find I've, you know, over practice, the slower you go, the better the result. Okay, and then what I also like to do is on the corners, is I just take off the corner. 
And again, and I'm just going to do this corner because it's got one side that I have obviously had to fuse. Make sure I've got no plastic melting on there. When it cools down, you can just pick it off as well. Okay, I'm not going to turn it off just yet in, taste, in, case, in, taste, in case I've got any, um, you know, gaps. But now I'm just going to bring in some tissue. I'm just going to start spreading it out. And then you can kind of go up and just start pushing the gel against the sides. Probably could have put a little bit more in this one. But it looks like... Oh, no. Can you see it's just there? All of this is fine. This is fine. But I've got a little bit there. But in a minute, I'm going to be flattening the about quarter of an inch all the way around the edge there. So I'm not too worried if I had the odd leak because you're really going to seal it in a minute as well with your foam and everything. But I'm just going to very lightly... You can hear where the gel's going to hit against it. I think we're okay. Let it cool for a second. Yeah, I definitely could have put a bit more in this one, but it's fine. And then I can just go back up there again. Yeah, that's all sealed now. Perfect. So it's, you know, pretty quick to do. The more practice you have, I probably just went, it, my hand did slip a little bit, so it probably went a bit quick there, but the key tip for this is slow. Go slow with it and it works fine. So I'm happy. Oh, actually, I need the tissue. What? It, yeah, so I just said what I'm going to do. So you want to just bring it in, just kind of rub. I don't know why I'm using the tissue. I don't need to, but just in case anything does come out. But just push the gel kind of away from all of the sides. Just because you're going to add some tape to this to stick it in place. So I just find that it's just a little bit easier to add the tape if you haven't got I must have another little leak there and just see a little bit of gel coming out but I just find it easier to add the um, the tape if it's flat I think I've got a little gap here it only just needs a little bit you're just melting that plastic there you go I'm not going to worry about checking that one because I know it'll be all right but now I have got just a flat kind of, you know, area around all four sides there. I know that's kind of hard to see on camera, but it will make it will make sense in a moment. Okay, so then I've got my card. I've done all of them as top folding. I just kind of, I like that style. And uh, yeah, that's why I've done it. So you want to stick your vellum, first of all, down here, or your pattern paper, whatever it is that you might have. So I'm just going to use some double-sided tape and just run... A strip around all four sides. Obviously, whatever tape you're using, make sure it doesn't crawl into the aperture space that you have. So just check. I know this is going to be the right size because I've used this on the other two, but um, I'll just explain to you. So you imagine, obviously, that's all down there. When your window goes over, you don't want to see any tape. I mean, all my areas are quite thick here. It's a bit thinner there, but you, you can see that, you know, you're not going to see any of that. So just bear that in mind. So you now want to stick that onto your card. Okay, then I have gone and kind of stamped and coloured a ton of images. I've got things for other projects in here as well, but I'm just going to pull out all the bits for this one. Okay, so you can see here just how wonderful they all look. There's the kingfisher. I was going to use it, but I've decided not to, so I'll put that one away. But look at this one. Is it the herring? Um, I'm not massively confident with my bird names. Anyway, so you want your fish or whatever it is that you want to have under the pond or under the, under the pond, under the water. So I'm going to have these two here. I have got another one. I've done that in alcohol markers, but I didn't quite like it, whereas these are all in my Arteza pencils. So I think I prefer that one. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with that. Well, how have I got those? So that one, yeah, let's have it a little bit different. So we're going to do that. And then again, just check that, you know, you're happy with where they're positioned. So I think they're good. So I'm going to just pop a little bit of glue on the back. Change the orientation there. I just prefer it that way. I think the fish fit better. And then before we stick that down, this is now when you want to stick this piece. So where you've kind of flattened all of the sides, it's easier now 
to run your double sided tape. Now, you know, I might still have a little kind of hole with this, but because it's the gel and the way I'm sticking it together, it's not going to seep out. And I should have said at the beginning, I don't recommend posting these cards along with the water card. I think they're best to be given, you know, by hand. Unfortunately, not all of our, you know, delivery guys, women, whoever, you know, are careful. And I've had things come through my door with footprints on them. So I dread to think what's happened. So I'd hate, you know, for someone to receive this and, um, you know, it'd be all squashed. But also with the gel, it's not going to just all leak out easily. Whereas with the water, you have to be 100% sure that that's not going to, to split um, that it hasn't got any holes whereas the gel is a little bit more forgiving but like I said I'm going to be sealing it some more with the foam and nothing's going to come out I've been squeezing mine all day <laughs> and it is secure so I'm just going to take the backing off of this and try not to pierce your uh, I'm being very careful there don't pierce your plastic and if you do have the We Are Memory Keeper fuse pockets and things like that, then you know that you'll probably have no problems with them. But you still have to do it slowly and everything. So, but I am using liquids, so I don't think they've intended for it to be done like that. Next, you want to sit this over the top and just get it in the middle. You could have it the same size if you want as the five and three quarters. But you just want to make sure, again, that it's bigger than your aperture. Stick that all down. So again, if I bring this over, you see everything is concealed, and this is lifted because obviously there's, you know, we've got all this um, gel in there. So with this piece and my foam, you can add two layers. If you have folded your plastic, like I said at the beginning, then I would peel this off and add another layer on top. But this is one layer's fine for, you know, if you fuse the bag and you haven't got any of that added bulk. So I'm just going to cover those corners, take the backing off. So what I would say, you know, is just have a play around with this first of all. You know, just test, get some sandwich bags if you've got the fuse tool and just fill it with water and practice. And then when you're happy, then, you know, move on to actually putting it into a card. So now, I'll bring this one in again, make sure you've got your border. That foam has also gone over the sides of or the edges of that bag with the gel in. Nothing's coming out of this card. You're going to have to really squeeze and pop that. So again, I wouldn't give it to the young, young kids that are really going to kind of, you know what they're like, they pull things apart and rip things. But certainly for those, you know, the younger adults, I think it's going to be, or the older children, then I think it's going to be perfect. But now, oh, sorry, I've just got all this stuck to my finger. We've got our gel filled card. Isn't it cool? I think you get a really good water effect with the gel as well. And you can see the bubbles from the vellum print and everything. So now I've just got all these bits and pieces to decorate. So I'll bring in these two just so you can see again. I've tried to do every one different. So those fish there are the die cut fish, whereas these are the stamped ones that I've colored. And then here I've got the frog on the lily pads. I've got some of the, the green kind of, you know, pond plants here and here and then the dragonfly. So for this one, I really want to bring in this beautiful bird. So he's kind of looking down on those fish and I want to bring in some of these other, maybe have like a bit more of a, a cluster of them and have maybe, you know, so the fish are a little bit more hidden. Maybe have those two together because they kind of look all the same. And that's where the bird would kind of be hiding like so. So you can kind of do something like that. And then I want another lily pad up there with the frog. Well, maybe he should come down. Maybe I have that a bit higher. Have the lily pad and the frog down here. This is going to be a get well soon. So I'm going to have maybe that up there. And this is what I like to do is, is get everything ready and then kind of decide where you want it and lay it out. I'm going to have a couple of li lily pads together. I might not end up using that one but I will use some more of these ones. I like them full, as you can probably tell. So we could have that flower there as well. The dragonfly would be kind of around these. See how nice it all comes together. And then I've been kind of ripping these in half and having them kind of just coming out 
don't think I need another thing. I think that's probably enough, Sam. <laughs> you don't want to go, go too, too mad. But I do want to create a nice scene. Saying that, though, I think this needs something to cover. Maybe I should have that down there with that lily pad on that side. Maybe I don't have frog. I do like that, and I've used that there. But then I've done that differently. Look, I've given you an idea. <laughs> you can see what I'm doing. And... Um, I think I do like that and I think I'll lose the frog. I'll keep him for something, another project, because I've got a pad there for him to sit on. But I quite like that. I think that looks really nice. And it just shows off all those stamps and dies, I think, really well. So I'm going to go and get this all stuck down. I'm just using some of my glue, liquid glue and foam pads. So what I've been doing is the back pieces, I've been just adding glue. So let's just make sure I've got that positioned. Yeah, so that's going to go about there. So you make sure it's all going to fit in your envelope. You don't want anything overhanging too much. But then things like this, I will just be putting a little bit of foam onto them. Just again, just to give it that dimension. Like I said, these will be hand delivered. So I could pop these in my envelope boxes. Yeah, so I'm just going to yeah, get this all stuck down. Okay, so there is the finished card. I love it, I think it's so, so cool. For the inside, all you need to do is cut a piece of five and three quarters in the green, in my case, and then five and a half in the white and stamp, and obviously do any more stamping and with the images and color and stuff if you want to, but I think they're really nice. I've really enjoyed making these cards. They do have a bit of a weight to them, so again, you know, I do think that these are better to be hand delivered. I mean, if you're going to put them, if you do need to post them and you want to do it, then I would suggest that you do the gel and not the water, and that you put it in a box card and then put it in another little box as well. So just to protect it, the last thing you want is it being squashed. But yeah, I really, really like them. So I hope you've enjoyed this card project and you are inspired. And uh, yeah, if you do make one, I'd love to see them. So as always, please join our Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group. And um, over there, you know, we've got a lovely group of uh, people who share any of their cards and boxes and storage whatever I've made that's inspired you you are more than welcome to share it on that channel so yeah thank you for watching please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today and consider subscribing so you get to see more bye Hi everyone, so if you're still tuned in to this video, thank you, because that now means that you have the opportunity to win some of the wonderful product that I've just shared making that lovely gel filled card. So when I was sent this product from Craft Stash, they actually sent me some bundles, which meant I had doubles of things. So here I have doubles of the Into the Pond die set, the Elements die set, and this one here, which will create a very, very similar look to what I've just shared in that video and it's a lovely big die, six by six, which will create, again, that aperture window, and it's like a pond kind of patio effect for your card making. Now, to win this, this is gonna be for UK only. However, I also have another giveaway from Craft Stash, which is for a 50 pound voucher, and that one's gonna be open worldwide, and that's gonna be over on my Facebook group, which I'll talk about in a moment. But for this one here, it will be UK only, because I will be posting this myself. And um, you have to be over 18, you have to be subscribed to the channel and I will check that. And all I want you to do is comment below and just put underwater. That's all you need to put. Don't put thanks for this chance to win this giveaway underwater or thank you Sam. But just put underwater because it makes it very easy then for it to be filtered for me to then be able to use the random generator you know, competition thing that they have, the picker app or whatever it is, it can it can filter those out very quickly. So that's all you need to do, okay? And then I will keep this going 24 hours from this video. So it would be 24, so it'd be 5 p.m. on Thursday. GMT, that's UK time. Then for those of you that are outside of the UK, if you head over to Facebook to my Facebook group Mixed Up Crafters, I will link it below this video. Over the weekend, I will be giving away a £50 voucher, which will be a code which I will give to that winner and I will explain everything there. Okay, so don't be disheartened that you've not been able to participate in this one right now, because if you win the £50 voucher, then you can buy this product with that. So tune in for that one. Like I said, all the links will be shared below and that will be over the weekend. But for anybody that's in the UK and you'd like to get your mitts on this, just comment below underwater 
and on five yeah five o'clock Thursday so tomorrow I will turn off the comments and I will select a winner a winner <laughs> randomly and I will contact you I'll do a quick um, announcement on YouTube okay so thank you everybody as always really appreciate your support and good luck see you